Dana Jacobson from CBS Saturday Morning. Welcome to The Dish. Farm-to-table eating owes its popularity to fresh ingredients. Locally grown produce, meat, and dairy are at the heart of each meal. Today we visit some of the chefs finding inspiration in their own backyard. We'll take you to California wine country, where instead of grapes, one couple grows veggies for their Japanese-inspired menu. And to Colorado, to the Rockies, where a resilient family's 450-acre farm supplies an urban restaurant. But first, we head to the Berkshires in Massachusetts to meet the cookbook authors celebrating the region's farm-fresh produce. For a classic slice of Americana, it is hard to beat the Berkshires in western Massachusetts. From quaint downtowns to breathtaking vistas and seemingly limitless outdoor activities, there's a potential postcard around every corner. But the tourist draws aren't the whole story. Woven Roots Farm is here to nurture the soil that nourishes the community. Two decades ago, Jen Selinetti and her husband made a choice. They wanted to build a farm in their own uncompromising way. The traditional ancestral ways of farming are what we are being called back to. And I have an opportunity to offer that information and that knowledge keeping to the greater community. You're sort of moving forward by, by looking back. Absolutely. Today, Woven Roots is a small but thriving no-till farm. No-tilling means less erosion and less carbon release, but often far more flavor. For example, the first carrots of the season. Before you harvest, we always take a moment to just to give thanks. And so I would encourage you to do that, and it might just taste a little bit sweeter. There it is. There's the first one. Soil and all. Sweet, delicious, and amazing. Doesn't get any more natural than that. Salinetti's story is one of 42 farmers and chefs told in Robert Bildner and Elisa Spungen Bildner's tribute to homegrown harvests in New England. Each chapter of the Berkshire's Farm Table Cookbook features recipes unique to a particular place. People who go to farmer's markets need to know this, that this is what went into the, the tomato that they're about to pick up. Um, and it's an extraordinary amount of work, extraordinary amount of love. There's a, a great variety. We have meat farmers, we have cheese makers, we've got amazing vegetable growers. The Builder family has been in the food business for three generations. Robert and Elisa once owned a food processing company. But putting together this book was an awakening for them. Over seven years, we've traipsed down dirt roads we didn't know existed. It really takes a lot of persistence to do this. I mean, we've literally been out in the fields with our recorders, and it's taken years to get people to call us back and back and forth. And, and I did the photography of the book as well. Um, you've, it was been, a you've been on the ground and, and in the ground. On the ground, in the ground, Jeff, it's been a labor of love for us. So. We've been, I remember taking notes in a field of watercress, um, and I didn't think my computer was going to survive because literally it's in mud when I was, you know, <laughs> was taking notes. Um, That's the way but, to do it. <laughs> of course, of course. I it wish is, I had your sound crew too. I know. Because <laughs> my mic wasn't so great. <laughs> to compile the cookbook, husband and wife worked with Chef Brian Elberg, who grew up here, then was trained with the world's best. What does farm to table mean for you? To me, it just means what I've always done. He's now the executive chef for over half a dozen of the region's top restaurants. With your training, you could have done New York City, Paris, whatever else. You chose the Berkshires, why? Yeah, it's, it's unpretentious, it's communal. Um, it's just a, you know, this, this business is so stressful that it's, it's really comforting to be in the business with other like-minded people that really want to cultivate the agricultural aspect of it and respect the arts um, and, and our craft. So it's nice to be in that environment. For us, Elberg prepared a Berkshire's Feast, all recipes found in the book. Harissa grilled cauliflower with sweet corn and avocado relish, salad with kale, egg, rice wine vinegar, and smoked almonds, grilled carrot bread with cranberries and garlic skate butter, grass-fed beef top round, slowly cooked, and white bean soup with sausage and kale. All of the ingredients came from within 50 miles, most within walking distance. Albert topped it off 
with a brand new creation. Okay, the cocktail. So this is called the Bartlett. Okay. And it's named because one of my employees brought in raspberries from Bartlett's Orchards today. So we made up a cocktail with it. So it's Bartlett's raspberries, mint, lime, and Berkshire Mountain Distillers vodka. Cheers. Cheers. You made up a cocktail today, this morning, yeah. based on the ingredients that were available. Because they asked me to make a cocktail. That's how we roll. Thank That's you. That's what we do. <laughs> up next, the surprising protein-packed ingredient in plant-based meat. You're watching The Dish. Now a different context for farm to table. Meatless meals are more widely available than ever, offered at grocery stores and even fast food chains. Believe it or not, the protein rich ingredient in many plant-based meats is actually peas. Nancy Chen got a taste of what's driving the rise of pea protein in America. Near Times Square, one of the best joints for a burger with all the fixins, isn't serving any meat. April Tam Smith is the co-founder of P.S. Kitchen. The vegan restaurant was one of the first in New York City to serve the brand Beyond Meat back in 2017. I remember when we first opened, the questions were usually around, what's in this? Wow, it's really good. What am I eating? Fast forward to today, as meat alternative products are creating new appetites for all. The people who are coming in wanting to try this burger, are they vegetarian or are they meat eaters? I would say mostly meat eaters. I think about 80% of our customers are just regular people, people who are just craving the burgers. Changing the nation's taste buds isn't easy. Nearly nine in 10 Americans eat meat as part of their diet. 25% say they're at least willing to try plant-based burger alternatives. That includes this Oklahoma girl. So this is the Beyond Meat Burger and yeah. there's absolutely no meat in this. No, not at all. It's made with pea protein. All right. Mm. This is really good. <laughs> it just tastes like a regular burger. As for where much of it comes from, near the South Dakota border in Dawson, Minnesota, are the seeds of a food revolution. Brother and sister Tyler Lorenzen and Nicole Atchison had the largest pea protein plant in North America. What exactly is pea protein? Pea protein is protein that comes from peas, and not green peas, actually yellow field peas. There's actually 20% protein in peas which is quite a bit for most vegetables. A chance to change what we eat and how we farm. Nicole, I was surprised to learn, I mean, even on the drive in here, I'm passing fields of crops, that those crops aren't necessarily going to people. And for the most part, they're actually going to livestock. Yeah, and that's, I think, surprising for a lot of people, because as we drive around, we think, oh, look at all this food that we're making. Puris works with a network of more than 400 farmers to source their pea plants. Peas are actually one of the most soil nurturing plants you can grow, which is great for healthy crop rotations. What does this mean for farmers in the United States these days? We've worked over the last 20 years to adapt varieties that can grow right in the heartland. Peas aren't typically grown in Canada, and so we've really adapted them to new climates, which gives farmers more revenue opportunities. One of the biggest customers for their pea varieties is Beyond Meat, found not only in P.S. Kitchen, but now McDonald's, Taco Bell, and Panda Express. It seems like the industry of plant-based protein has really gone through a revolution these past few years. Yeah, I think the biggest change has been the products on the market really mimicking their counterparts that are coming from animal proteins. With flavor and looks, pea protein is proving to be more than just a food trend. The meat eaters that are coming in and trying these plant-based burgers, what are they seeking? I think often it's it really is just genuinely delicious. You don't really feel like you're missing out on something. But at the same time, a lot of us are more aware of the environmental impact now. So it's really a win-win for the consumer, for the environment, and for our bodies. Husband and wife duo Kyle and Katina Connaughton honed their Epicurean skills for years across Europe and Asia. After returning to their native California, they opened Single Thread, a farm-to-table restaurant boasting three Michelin stars. Lilia Luciano followed their food from plant to plate. What do we have here? <laughs> Uh, these are our spring peas. In the heart of American wine country, instead of a glass of Chardonnay, you'll find the freshest peas, pods, flowers and all, straight off the trellis. I love these flowers. Are, are these edible too? Or they do you most use them? certainly are. Oh, nice. 
Katina and Kyle Connaughton's farm property is home to bees, chickens, fresh vegetables destined for the kitchen, and a host of flowers. Something we love so much about the kitchen is that they're not trying to manipulate the hard work of the farm. They're really highlighting it and celebrating it. The couple's path to three Michelin stars began when they were teenagers. Were you always passionate about food? Yeah, well, we had this long vision being together since we were teenagers yeah. and we had this dream and we fell in love with this area and 17 years later opened a restaurant about a block away from where we first really kind of dreamed about one day having a restaurant here. Have we always loved food? Yeah. I'm pretty sure we have. Yeah. It has been a remarkably successful journey. They spent years learning their trades in Europe and Asia and their time in Japan especially had a profound influence on their culinary style and the taste from Single Thread's acclaimed kitchen. I am so excited. Oh my gosh, I'm excited to cook for you. <laughs> this is inspired by a tres leches cake, which is like our favorite leches. dessert. Well, yeah, it's my favorite yeah. dessert too, for sure. So this is like a savory version of that. Just Be start in the middle, go all the way down, get a little bit of everything. At the table, it's quite the ride of color, flavor, and texture. This was completely expressing itself in my mouth. Yeah. This is, it really is an expression of so much, so many flavors. But recently, that achievement has been fraught with speed bumps. We certainly are no stranger to crisis management. From wildfires that force people from the region to the pandemic, lockdowns caused them to pivot to sending out farm fresh veggie boxes and preparing meals for first responders, frontline and farm workers. Then just a single thread was getting back on its feet. We had a fire in the middle of service in the middle of our exhausts all the way through from the stove up to the rooftop and it's closed us down for two and a half months of repairs. What is it that keeps you guys moving? It's resilience, yeah. it's tenacity, it's the, the punk rock teenagers that still <laughs> live deep within us. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're putting their past setbacks behind them and expanding settling into their 24-acre farm and welcoming new clientele to their second location, the plant-based Little Saint. We wanted to do something more casual in our community that had more accessibility for locals and visitors and that you could visit more frequently. The Connaughton's life together is a lesson to us all. Perseverance, passion, and positivity underscored by their lifelong love story. Our whole life revolves around our work and we're so passionate about it. It is, it is such a mutual appreciation for what each other does. Definitely. Is there a single thread or is there, or are there more? Is there a single thread? Well, no thread is just one, really. It's a series of fibers woven together and I think that is very true to who we are as well. Up next, Exploring Roots. Jill and Eric Skokin's passion for fresh ingredients led them from a simple backyard garden to a 450-acre farm. Their restaurant, Bramble and Hare, gets nearly everything they need from their own fields and pastures. And at the height of the pandemic, it also saved their business. Michelle Miller visited their Colorado spot to experience how they make it all work. Just outside of Boulder, in the foothills of the Colorado Rockies, suburban sprawl has forged a friendship with fruitful farmland. Oh, there's a bunch of good ones right there. Oh yeah? Look at that. Perfectly right. It's where folks like Eric Skokan and his wife Jill have learned to grow their living. I'm looking for ones that have a huge amount of flavor. Farming these fields for produce or herding their flock of sheep. The sheep, they see new grass and they're like, oh, hooray. <laughs> but it's important for us to like move the sheep continually so they don't kill off the grass here. <laughs> Look at them go! But Skokan's 450 acres, dubbed Black Cat Farm, is just half the story. In town, he runs the popular Bramble and Hare, where his seasonal menu is almost entirely sourced from his own produce and livestock. Did we mention he pulls double duty as the chef, too? The farms the supply, the restaurants the demand. Yeah, yeah. And they feed each other. Absolutely. There's farm to table, 
and then there's farm to table ish, right? <laughs> and we're not farm to table ish, we are farm to tables, right? I think really the important thing is for us that it's been authentic authenticity. Only a handful of restaurants in the U.S. are like Bramble and Hare, one part farm, one part kitchen, growing nearly their entire menu themselves. In the restaurant, we need the hearty, bulky things, uh, the potatoes and the carrots and the mm -hmm. beets. And then we also need the things that are really delicate. And then these things sort of get sprinkled on. They give this sense of life and freshness to the substance that we've grown in the other field. Eric and Jill were first inspired almost 20 years ago while on an unforgettable trip in Basque country in the south of France. We ate in a little restaurant, Auberge Kojoki, one of my best meals I've ever had in my life. Everything they ate was locally produced and optimally fresh. That, they decided, is what they wanted to recreate at home. It was just magic, you know, when, it, when you just know yeah. that it makes sense. They opened a restaurant and began a small backyard garden, which they quickly outgrew, moving on to open land outside of town. That was the idea of expanding the farm and doing the big things out there. And we loved it, right? I got to drive a tractor, and really maybe that's what it was. Like yeah, I got to drive a tractor, the little and boy. I, right? Within a decade, a few acres became hundreds, and with it, a full-blown farm. We've got about 500 sheep. We do about 24 geese a year. We do about 120 hogs a year. Lots of chickens, we have, you know, four dogs. It's a menagerie, it's, we have animals all over the place. Today's harvest is on full display. We're swimming in produce coming out I of the bed. farm, right? It's like- The fall is harvest season. It is, and today, uh, over the last week, this is like the peak of the peak of the peak. Everything Skoken serves up screams seasonal. One of my favorite dishes in the fall. Let's take the whole season, condensed it down into a stew, ratatouille style. A medley of sauteed peppers, eggplant, and tomatoes spooned into an edible vessel. And then we fill that inside of uh, little summer squashes. And then one of my favorite cheeses ever, Taleggio, that we put on top. And it's like, and it's like heaven. Candlelit dinners may be the fanciest way to get a taste of what the farm has to offer, but it certainly isn't all of it. We have our farm stand. We have our farm delivery truck. We do dinners out here at the farm. We have farm tours, buses of kindergarten kids running around through the strawberry patch. We have opened ourselves up to the community here for 16 years. It's really about feeding communities. And during the pandemic, while national supply shortages left supermarkets empty handed, Black Cat Farm was able to supply the demand. We didn't have that problem. In fact, we were here on this farm, we were you know, inundated with food. We were able to retool our operation like that. Um, and literally within days, we were able to you know, close the restaurant, open up a farm stand, and start taking care of you know, customers in, in the community. And that community of customers, in turn, took care of them. At the beginning of COVID, we lost our son, Kelsey. Two years ago, on the road by their home, their son was killed when a dump truck smashed into his car. Through all this process, we have, you know, reevaluated what we want to do uh, in life. Many things have that we thought were important, really, you know, for Jill and me, are not, you know, particularly important anymore. With this life-altering tragedy, their passions and inspirations are clearer than ever before. Moving forward, we are really excited to um, cook at the farm, have dinners at the farm. It's the final piece of the dream they started cooking up two decades ago, giving diners the full farm experience, eating just feet from the fields in these cozy greenhouses equipped with wood stoves. Creating it such that I can walk right over there harvest a few things, walk into the kitchen, and have the food come out a couple minutes later, creating that experience for people. It's enriching for me to be able to do it. It's enriching for our customers and for the community as well. It's, it's the best win-win out there. For more stories like these and live coverage of breaking news 24-7, stream us right here on CBS News. I'm Dana Jacobson. We'll see you next time for another helping of the dish.